Hi, I'm Mike Lee with Team Horizon, and this is a Team Tech Tip. In this video, I'm going to discuss why you may wish to use a higher frame rate on your Spectrum DX9 or DX18 transmitter. Before I show you how to make that switch, I'm going to explain what happens when you do that, how it affects you and the radio, and the reason why you may not wish to switch. First, a little bit of Servo 101 class. Today, a majority of the servos sold with radio systems, as well as from the hobby shops, are digital servos. This is a shift away from the previous generation of servos, known as analog servos. For those of you who are familiar with digital servos, you may know that digital servos are capable of being updated between 300 and 500 times, or cycles, per second. This is vastly faster than analog servos, which average being updated only about 150 times per second. It is for this reason that digital servos are more accurate, capable of faster speeds, and capable of faster response. Note that I said capable of being faster and more accurate. The word capable means that the servo can be faster, and this has a lot to do with the frame rate. Keep that in mind for just a moment, but first, what is a frame? A frame is a logical series or collection of control commands put together by the encoder section of your radio. Each control command for each channel of the radio is arranged in a channel sequential order within the signal package called the frame. For example, if the encoder section of the radio is designed to hold command over six channels, the encoder will arrange the position of each channel into a logical sequence that does not change. For the purpose of this video, the sequence can be throttle, aileron, elevator, rudder, gear, and auxiliary one. The transmitter control sticks, knobs, and switches are used to make adjustments to the individual channels for their position. These channel commands are sent to the encoder by the physical controls every few milliseconds when pulled by the, the encoder. Once the encoder has all the return signals from the physical controls, it puts them in order and creates the frame. In the case of the normal spectrum transmitter, one of these frames is created every 22 milliseconds and then sent out from the transmitter to the receiver. Okay, what I wanted to show you was a little bit of a graphic view, what it might look like on paper, what a frame rate looks like, if it were on an oscilloscope, and how it affects your aircraft. The top line is basically the schematic of a frame. As we mentioned earlier, it's made up of the command channels as you run through the receiver and transmitter. Throttle, aileron, elevator, rudder, gear, and auxiliary. That makes up this particular frame. Down here we see the same frame with a change to the elevator. And that's what it looks like on an oscilloscope if you move the elevator stick, let's say to full up elevator. And it's real common to see, it's just a change in that pulse width that gives the commands on out to the receiver. Now these two bottom lines represent the frames at the 11 millisecond rate and 22 millisecond rate. As you can see it's much shorter on the 11 sec millisecond rate than the 22 millisecond rate. That means that it's twice as many frames going on out of the transmitter to the receiver as there was at the 22 millisecond rate. And that's what it's all about. More frames per second means a faster, quicker response by the servos. Now let's get back to our discussion. Okay, so now you know what a frame is, and the typical spectrum radio sends out the frames every 22 milliseconds. Why would you want to change to a frame rate that's 11 milliseconds? Well, if you fly advanced performance aircraft, you'll know that the speed of the servos can affect your ability to fly. The servos that are capable of higher speeds and quicker response will be better able to meet those demands by getting the commands from the receiver faster, twice as fast in the case of the Spectrum DX9 and the DX18. Pilots who fly precision models like Pattern and Scale, or racing models like Pylon Racing and Dynamic Soaring Models, demand a radio that has instant response to command. A faster frame rate gives that speed and precision movement necessary to fly more effectively. The pilots feel more connected to the plane, and the feeling is more akin to flying by thought rather than by feel and finger. 3D pilots also need that fast response in order to pull off the gravity-defying stunts that they're famous for. So if you think you're ready for a faster responding model, let's look at how to change that faster frame rate in the DX9 and the DX18. Now that we've decided we're going to change our frame rate, let's see how we do it on the DX9 and the DX18. From the operational sp screen, we're going to go into the function list, depress the scroll switch once, we're going to scroll on down to System Setup. Depress the scroll switch once. Answer the question whether the RF will be disabled or not. Please answer yes. Depress the scroll switch once. You are now in the System Setup and scroll down to Frame Rate. 
press the scroll switch once. Scroll on over from where it says list to 22 millisecond. And to press the scroll switch once. It is now changed to 11 millisecond and the message comes up when 11 milliseconds is selected. Digital servos must be used. That's all there is to it. Hit the back key twice. And you're back in the operational screen. You're ready to go. Now let's get back to our discussion. Unfortunately, it's not possible for us to show you graphically if the servo response is faster or not because the frame rate of the video camera is a mere 32 frames per second and the DX9 and DX18 is more like 1,024 frames per second. But now that you know how to switch the frame rate on your transmitter, you should fly the system and see if this change has improved your ability to handle the plane. Note that there are some limitations that may affect whether you will find improvement or not. First, it is not recommended that you speed up the frame rate if you are using analog servos. Analog servos will not be able to handle the faster rate of information. Instead, these servos may begin to jitter and appear to be nervous. If you see your analog servos doing this, it is best to switch back to the 22 millisecond setting. Also, if your servos do not respond to each and every trim click that you input from the transmitter, this could be a sign the servo will not do better at the higher frame rate. If you're using programmable servos and the servos do not move with each click of the trim button, you should decrease the deadband setting to get a better resolution to the frame rate. Some pilots turn up the deadband to stop the servo from buzzing, but this dulls the sensitivity to the stick command. Don't be afraid to try things out to see if you can get the best performance possible from your system. Lastly, make sure the servo itself is fast enough for the application. The standard servo that is provided in most radio systems is typically not a high speed, high performance servo. They are most likely a sports servo with a speed of 0.21 to 0.26 seconds lock to lock transit time. A high performance servo in my book is a servo that has a transit speed of 0.12 seconds lock to lock or faster. That's better than twice the speed of the standard servo. So if your servo is slow, you may not benefit at all from the faster frame rate. I hope that you've enjoyed our te tech tip on changing frame rates. Stay tuned for more tips, tricks, and techniques from the team that will help you enjoy this hobby even more. For Team Horizon, I'm Mike Lee, and you just got yourself a team tech tip. Thanks for watching.